looks like we have heightened tensions between Israel and Iran once again, as well as the heightened tensions between Russia, Ukraine, the United States, and the ever-growing threat of a China-Taiwan war. It seems that the world is under fire. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is from an article by Sky News. Israel would do whatever we need to do to defend ourselves against Iran, Netanyahu says. This article is dated June 9th. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told Sky News he will do whatever we need to do to defend ourselves against Iran and diplomacy has failed to stop Tehran from developing its nuclear capabilities. Speaking exclusively at the prime minister's office, and you know what, I'll just uh, make this bigger. Um, speaking exclusively at the prime minister's office in Jerusalem, Mr. Netanyahu rejected U.S. attempts to resolve the growing crisis only through dialogue. I don't think that diplomacy by itself will work. I think diplomacy can only work if it's coupled with a credible military threat or the willingness to apply the military option if deference fails, he said. Now, look, the International Atomic Agency have been uh, thoroughly vetting Iran's nuclear capabilities and saw that there were no threat in building a nuclear bomb, that they didn't have the capabilities. Iran, I mean, uh, Israel has basically pressured, been pressuring uh, the international theater to basically intervene on their behalf because they don't got the balls to do so. And basically, uh, sanction, which we are doing currently, uh, which will end up destroying the middle and lower classes of the country. And that's what sanctions do. And this comes at a very strange time because Iran is basically um, in a brokered deal of sorts with its arch rival, Saudi Arabia. Arch rival in terms of religion is uh, the Saudi Arabia being the most prominent Sunni country on earth and Iran being the most prominent Shia country on earth. And for many decades, they've been at odds with each other. But because of pressure from the European Parliament and through the Arab World League, the uh, lead governments of these countries have pressured both countries to come to an agreement, a peace agreement, and basically coexist. And they're doing that currently. Iran, I mean, Israel, basically is has a tentative ally relationship with Saudi Arabia, but I don't think ever trusted them, um, which is a good thing because Saudi Arabia shouldn't be trusted. But neither should Israel here, because Israel is basically being the antagonist and when I say antagonist, it's for Iran, for Iran, um, in which I see a future war coming. Um, we also have Taiwan and China, but that's not the, the basis of the talk today. So there are three areas of the world where we're going to see a revisitation of the Cold War because the war on terrorism is basically over. You know, every 10 years, we have a new enemy and a new war. And... Um, you know, we're at 2023. I think from uh, 2022 onward, we'll see either engagements and well, we're already seeing in Ukraine, but I think that's going to wane. And I think Russia is going to win that conflict in the long run. Um, but two potentially even bigger conflicts are on the horizon. China and Iran. And Iran won't be alone because they'll have Syria and Lebanon. That's the reason why we are uh, intervening in Syria and taking their oil currently. Um, and Lebanon has always been an arch rival to Iran because of Hezbollah. They haven't forgotten 2006, where the IDF had lost. Let's go back to the article. Iran is openly committed to destroying, repeating the Holocaust and destroying the six or seven million Jews of Israel. And we're not going to sit idly by and let them do it. If these Ayatollahs think they could threaten us with a nuclear holocaust, they're wrong. We will do whatever we need to do to defend ourselves. Israel is the only country where a foreign entity does not vet their nuclear capabilities. And um, I don't know why. They're not part of any uh, nuclear agreements. And um, they're the only country to do so. Um, and that's because they don't trust anybody. 
you know, they feel that, you know, for such a small country and with the Holocaust of World War II and the pogroms in Russia, um, you know, they feel that, uh, you know, no one's helping them, that they only help themselves. Now, this creates a, an aura of paranoia and distrust. And we're talking about the government here, not talking about the people. And it seems that the governments don't ever serve the interests of the people here, anywhere, especially the major countries. You think the people would finally revolt? Well, they're slowly doing it in Europe. January 6th here in the United States was a failed attempt. <laughs> that wasn't even a coup. Coups don't start at the U.S. Capitol. They, destroy, they start by destroying the economic structures. During the interview, Mr. Netanyahu sent the message to Saudi Arabia and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as rumors of a peace deal between the countries continue to circulate. Our hand is extended to all Arab states and certainly to Saudi Arabia, which is vitally important. Yet yeah, in this regards, because they know they can antagonize Saudi Arabia. You're a Sunni country. The Munafiq, fake Arab in the Arabic, are the Iranians, Shia. We have great opportunities to advance the peace in our region, peace between our two countries, the well-being of our peoples. I think it would change history. I mean, we have already made one historic turning point with the four peace treaties of the Arabian Accords, which Israel made under my leadership with the United Arab Emirates, with Bahrain, with Morocco, with Sudan. Obviously, Saudi Arabia would be a quantum leap forward because it's the most influential Arab country, not only in the Arab world, I think also in the Muslim world, so it would fashion, I think, the possibility of ending the Arab-Israeli conflict. And I think that it would help also help us solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Only if, if you return back to the pre-1946 borders, or even just before the Six-Day War. Relinquish Gaza Strip, relinquish um, West Bank. And Palestinians need to get rid of Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. I mean, I know why they're using them, because they don't have a standing military. But they're also Salafi terrorists. Peace ain't going to come with a gun. Mr. Netanyahu, who also challenged the domestic issues, including the controversial judicial reforms that have divided Israel and seen 22 continuous weeks of mass protests, which is the reason why I said, never judge a country by its people, always by its government. The people know that Netanyahu is a criminal. I don't even know why he's a prime minister. He was under indictment for corruption in 2021. Um, and it seems that, you know, here's a, you know, he's a, a warmonger, should be at The Hague. He was forced to halt the process after the country came to a standstill following the sacking of the defense minister, who was later quietly reinstalled. Compromise negotiations are now taking place to find an agreement. And with the re-election of Netanyahu, Israel is under the most hawkish, most Zionist government they've ever had in their history. And that's saying something. More so than Menachem Begin, more so than Ariel Sharon. Um, it seems to me we have a situation where there is now a fairly broad majority that says we have to reform our judicial system, but the question is how much and how fast. And that is something that I decided in the wake of ensuring months to try and get a consensus, he said. I'm not sure we will get one. We're going to have to bring it into a happy middle. It's going to be very hard because it's extremely politicized and often misrepresented, and that's the article. Now, let me talk about what the real threat here is, and it comes from um, an article written by The Intercept by Ken Klippenstein in May of this year, in which an intelligence report from February leaked uh, by, by a, um, a leaker, and I'll name him in a minute, uh, where it says that the CIA doesn't know if Israel plans to bomb Iran. And this comes from um, a report in which it was posted on Ynet 
an Israeli publication, that there were leaked Pentagon documents that included matters relating to Israel and Iran, including at a training exercise, according to the CIA. That leaker came from an Air National Military Reservist named Jack Teixeira, who was a 21-year-old um, who leaked highly classified U.S. intelligence documents. And the State Department is, stated that it was the most security, serious security breach in more than a decade. And according to the New York Times, so I'm going to link all this in the description for you to see. According to New York Times, Tashara went by the nickname OG and ran an online group called the Thug Shaker Central for like-minded teens and men who discussed their shared love of guns, raced into online memes, and video games. This guy's not a whistleblower by any means. It's classified documents, but it does get to show you the threat that Israel poses in the Middle East. And, um, you know, Biden actually came out and stated that, uh, and this was in um, April, I think, of this year, in which he said that investigations were closing in on the source of the leak. Meanwhile, he was already arrested. You, know, you got to play catch up. Now, the leaked documents um, reveal also the spy efforts in the Ukraine war. And also what was happening with between Taiwan and China. And Israel, in some of those documents, basically asserted that Israel will likely consider providing lethal aid to Ukraine under, Ukraine, uh, under increased U.S. pressure or a, a perceived degradation in its relationship with Russia. The documents also charge that the Israeli Mossad encouraged Israelis to participate in mass protests against the government's judicial reform plan headed under Ben Yahoo. And also, there were documents about that revealed that China approved the provision of lethal aid to Russia in its war in Ukraine earlier in 2023, February, and planned to disguise military equipment as civilian items. So as you could see, there's a large threat here. Now, according to one document, and this is reported by I-24 News, and like I said, I'm going to put it in the description, it states that the CIA did not know what Israeli plans are in the near future and what its intentions were and that Israel may wait to see what the reaction of the United States and the international community will be to the findings of the International Atomic Energy Agency regarding Iran's nuclear program and whether the Iranian Supreme Leader will agree to enrich uranium to the level required for a nuclear weapon before they decide to act. And, of course, in the article I just read you, which is the most current, they're not waiting anymore. Because they figured that with the growing um, peace alignment between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which means that the Gulf, like Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, have also broken deals with Iran, will basically, Israel is probably thinking, we're going to be surrounded. So we need to basically facilitate a situation where the United States and the coalition partners will act on our behalf. Well, isn't that what happened with Iraq? In the document, Ben Nahu is referred to and is, and is written that he believes that Israel should attack Iran to deter its nuclear program, but he faces diminishing military capacity in his country to try and roll back Iran's enrichment program. And all you have to do is, you know, Google Iranian scientists assassinated by Israeli Mossad over the last 15 years. 
Iran, basically, this is no, also, they have their own problems. They have these, the Mullah Shura Council, and they're just, you know, not representative of the people. Um, but also, they are surrounded by U.S. military bases. Um, Israel has been an antagonist of Iran for uh, since the Six Day War, even before that, but has growing tensions between the two for the last 20 years. Now, according to another document disclosed to I-24 News, which was also written on February 23rd of 2023, the Revolutionary Guards Quds Force and the Shiite militias exploited aid shipments to earthquake victims in Syria to smuggle weapons to the Iranians. Because at the same time, Israel is bombing Iranian outposts to Syria to, to destroy the link to Lebanon. Remember, Lebanon, Syria, and Iran are the major Shia powers in the Middle East. So they want to break that chain. So in other words, you have Israel and Lebanon uh, basically almost neighbors at this point. Um, you have a country in Syria that basically is under constant threat. Um, Lebanon, Israel being neighbors. I get always get them mixed up with um, Syria. I always get these two mixed up. Um, Syria being, of course, under their own uh, dictatorship under Bashar al-Assad. But at the same time, the U.S. is also facilitating that war. Well, they, where they were at one point, providing aid and military equipment to Salafi jihadists, who at the same time were supposed to be at war with. Remember the war on terrorism? What happened there? Whatever happened there? That's a Sopranos link. Um, nevertheless, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And in this case, Iran is going to try and use Saudi Arabia, who is basically an enemy to Israel, because the mullahs in Saudi Arabia consider the Yahud, which is Arabic for Jew, the enemy, as well as any um, kafia non-believer. With Damascus right on the border of Lebanon, and you have Israeli uh, military bombing these Iranian outposts, which is a direct link between Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, to Iran. Iraq basically was an Israeli uh, antag antagonist. Uh, Iraq was always considered to be a part, uh, a, a true enemy to Iran, uh, to Israel. Uh, this was mentioned in the Oded Yunnan plan. Uh, the United States has always considered Iraq an enemy, even before the advent of bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Um, this is where they found Abu Nadal and killed him. Abu Nadal being the leader of the um, Abu Nadal organization an offshoot of the Palestinian Liberation Organization through this through the branch Fatah. So Israel basically should see the Gulf as the enemy, not Iraq, not Syria, not Lebanon, not Iran. But they consider these countries the enemies because they were the most enlightened in the Middle East. Enlightened meaning they were the countries that employed Arab nationalism under uh, socialism. And I've done a couple of videos on these, read an article on it, how these countries were more Western advanced than their Gulf countries, like Bahrain or, or um, Saudi Arabia or Kuwait. And countries like Egypt and Jordan and Syria, the, uh, e even Iraq and Afghanistan. were countries that were not countries with any religious fundamentalism. I mean, they were growing. Uh, it was a growing aspect of these countries because a lot of these countries' governments were repressive toward the lower classes, especially in Egypt and Syria. 
And that's why this what gave way to the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood, as well as other nefarious agendas as well. I mean, there's also some rumor that the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt were facilitated by uh, nefarious means, but the general consensus to experts is that this was a growing uh, Islamic school because they found that the country itself was under national pressure and also that these lower classes, and especially in Egypt, which still goes on today, uh, you have a class warfare system that goes all the way back to King Farouk. Um, and this gave rise to religious fundamentalism, uh, fundamentalists who went to these lower classes and tried to help them, using them, saying that we need a new government, a new system. In order to do that, we need to implement the Quran and the Sunnah, which gave rise to religious fundamentalism, which gave rise to uh, groups like Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram and Abu Sayyaf and Egyptian Islamic Jihad and all these other groups. Later on, Islamic State Levant and Al-Nusra. You get what I'm saying. And Israel played all this. You know, Israel was a big part of this because they used this as a pretext saying we need to destroy these countries' governments because that's what facilitated the religious rise of these uh, of, of these groups, which wasn't the case. That's not true. The governments basically itself were trying to coexist with one another in order to defeat or to not rely on so much the West, because that's exactly what the Syrian government was doing, the Egyptians were doing, Jordan was doing. And they were enjoying relations with Russia. They were enjoying relations with the United States. And Israel saw itself as an island unto itself because of the takeover of the Palestinians in the country, which is still the most incendiary area of the Middle East today. It's most the incendiary story, and it has been for the last you know, 70 years, 80 years. And in order to basically stop this problem from happening, we need real dialogue, level-headed people, not from the Israeli government, not from the U.S. government. They're bought and sold for. That's the reason why the Israeli uh, American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, APAC, exists, J Street. They exist only to heavily influence our government so that we will never waver. And this is the reason why blackmail operations like the Epstein case happen, to make sure that we remain allied to them. Because if we ever get the idea that we're not allied to them, oh, we'll leak uh, secrets that you don't want to be leaked. This is the reason why Israel uh, is exceptional in the cases of espionage. And when it comes to signals intelligence, few countries excel more so than Israel, besides maybe the United States or Great Britain. But this is the reason why, because if you have information, you have power. And so what I think, and it's a pipe dream, but we can try and achieve it. There's still good moral people out there. They just don't have a voice. And when you're up against a monolith like the U.S. government, and you have the media behind you, you know, you feel like you're powerless, but you're not. That's the reason why they go to great lengths to debase you, to keep you thinking you're the enemy to one another, and you're not. You got to remember, we're all one consciousness. And we need level-headed people to basically go and represent us and broker a, a real peace deal between the countries that are having such a, a, a troubling time because their governments are under the same uh, authority, nefarious authority, like ours. And hopefully, you know, those Israeli people will continue protesting. And hopefully, here in the United States, we can always hope that we finally wake up one day and we hold our government honest. 
and we break down the Democratic and, and Republican parties because they're all one party. There are no two parties. It's one. Until we realize that and that we're not the enemy and we hold these people accountable, they're going to continue ruining the world and affecting all of us.